Working on enterprise projects allow their agency Flow Ninja to scale better, to scale faster, to grow our revenue, but additionally also to learn a lot more about business, learn more a lot more about web design development and overall organization and how you should run a big organization. So that's why in this video, we're going to be going over on how we've used Webflow as our core offering to enterprises and what are usually enterprises looking for when they are deciding about their web development, web design or whatever tool that we're going to be using for the next years to come. So before going into the video, a little bit more about me. I'm Urash, I'm the founder and CEO at Flow Ninja. And like since 2015, we've ha helped clients like Upfor.com, Checkout.com, Notable Health and many other enterprises migrate their web experiences to Webflow and basically scare their businesses better by leveraging tools like Webflow. And in this video, well, I'm gonna be going over our personal opinion on why we think Webflow is a great tool for enterprises to, to use for web development part of like and, and the marketing part of their business and of course there might be some different tools that are out there but we're just going to be giving our experience and how we've used webflow for enterprises and why we think it's one of the best tools out there so if you're an agency probably the first question you're going to be asking yourself is working with enterprises actually any different than working with startups founders etc etc Good question. And I would say yes. And it's really, really a different process that you need to adjust your whole business model to in order to accommodate enterprise clients. I mean, the first thing is they're looking for partners for years to come. So like while as in startups, sometimes they want to move quickly. They want to do, do things fast in enterprises. It's all about the steady growth and like the steady returns for like the share shareholders and everything like that. Why? This why? is business. So that's why they're going to be looking for a reliable partner. That might be doing like a lot more referrals, like making sure that you actually worked with clients. You said you were getting on calls for those referrals, et cetera, et cetera. Or making sure that the tool you're using has been out there for years to come. In the case of Webflow, Webflow has been around since 2013. And you can see as the tool gets older and older that you have more and more enterprises and big businesses actually starting to use the tool itself. Just because it has been there for a long enough time for enterprises to see, okay, this is a good tool for us to use. It's going to give us this benefits, but then it's not going to come with any of the security like concerns that we might have because it has been out there for like a long time. And then like, if you're, if you're an agency, like that's going to come with slower turnaround times, which can be great, but it also can be bad. So like when closing a client, it's not going to be this week, you say yes. And then like next week you, you start working. It's more going to be like months of going through compliance, security checks, going through all of the stakeholders that are going to be involved into the project in order to make sure that they actually choose you for the partner moving forward. That can impact your revenue a little bit. But then on the other side, projects are going to be bigger. They're going to be more long term and you're going to be able to basically leverage in our case, Webflow to the full potential by spending a lot more time with a client and making sure that they use the tool to the full potential. I mean, why do enterprises actually consider Webflow as a tool at all? From our experience, there are a few different key things that usually enterprises come to us when they work with our agency Flow Ninja. And that is first, usually a unified brand experience because like enterprises have many different marketing websites connected into one that might be one for careers, one for resources, one for blogs, one for investors, one for just the marketing website. They might have some direct mail campaigns. There can be like, we have clients that have 10 different websites. And like usually before Webflow, all of those websites were on different platforms and that required paying 10 different platforms, their enterprise plans. It uh, required like SLAs with all of them, making sure that they're all compliant, making sure that they're all on brand, that they're unified with the brand. But in the end, when you are dependent on 10 different platforms, that cannot be the case. So by leveraging Webflow, they're going to be able to go ahead and have a unified experience of Webflow and have all of those websites, websites reverse proxied into a single experience for their marketing website under a single dashboard. And then by also like removing all of those dependencies, they're going to have much less engineering dependence. Their engineering team is going to be able to build the product, the, their core product better. Like they're, we're not going to be so reliant on like the engineering team while the marketing and the design team are going to be able to push their ideas better, faster. They can push more experiments, more tests, more interesting, like kind of reports, like interactive reports instead of just PDFs. So it's going to allow them to visually build a lot more things for their business and for their marketing team. But with all of that, it comes with kind of features and like there, there is some feature sets that enterprises are always looking for. And then we come to the section of, okay, what are the features that our enterprises are actually looking for when they're deciding for their web builder tool? 
The first feature is security and SLA agreements. So that's gonna come like first, like on the SLA side, which percentage of time, in this case, Webflow gonna guarantee the website is gonna be up, which compliance level they're gonna have SOC2 or something like that. Are they gonna be integrating with Okta or their single sign-on software? Are they gonna offer some custom security frame headers, some cust uh, custom SSLs, et cetera, et cetera. So like security is gonna be a big part because they cannot compromise security by migrating to the tool. And that's where all of those kind of security features from Webflow are gonna come really great and really handy if you wanna offer Webflow to enterprises or if you wanna use Webflow as an enterprise. The next concern is usually traffic and CMS limits. So by leveraging Webflow and enterprise, like we can have more than a million of visitors. I think Webflow uh, is currently getting around 5 billion views per month or close to that number, something like that. And that's probably gonna, probably gonna be changed changing with time. So websites hosted with Webflow are getting like around 5 billion views per, per month. That is an incredible amount of traffic. So like we have the security there and by leveraging like a Webflow enterprise, we're going to have a larger bandwidth for our website to make sure that they get uh, kind of visited in the fastest period of time and like with a global CDN that they're going to be there as fast as possible. And then on the other side, like if you see like there is a 10K limit on the CMS items, you know, okay, on the enterprise plan, I can go and have much bigger CMS collections and much, much more CMS items so that uh, I, I don't have any ceilings on kind of the, the CMS itself. Then closely tied up to the security, that's going to be publishing rights and like kind of in general kind of edit access and permissions for the project. So by leveraging Webflow Enterprise, you're going to be able to add specific kind of key roles for, for the project to make sure that somebody doesn't publish something they shouldn't have, et cetera, et cetera, so that you have a lot more control of who is publishing the website, when they're publishing, seeing the history of changes, who made the changes, who maybe introduced a bug, why they have introduced that bug, et cetera, et cetera, so that you can have much more clarity into when mistakes happen, why did they happen, and how can you prevent them in the future. And then finally, the, the final thing is going to be like working with the Webflow team itself. Probably you're going to have work with an expert. Like if you're, if you're an enterprise, like maybe with somebody like us or somebody if like from the experts at webflow.com, or like if you're an agency looking to offer Webflow to enterprises, I mean, you're going to be their contact person. But then additionally, the great thing is going to be like for any of the questions, you're going to be able to have Webflow and their technical architects by your side to make sure that you can actually make uh, like make this project a success and to make the most out of Webflow. And that might come in like doing a re reverse proxy that is supported by Webflow or similar things like that. So that you can basically tie all of the projects together and that you can have like, uh, as we said, like 10 different websites connected to one. And of course, all of this comes with concerns. Clients are usually going to be asking uh, how safe is all of this? Like, can it be hacked? Again, as there is no kind of plugins that can become outdated or the platform can become outdated because the whole platform is always updated kind of day by day. So that, that's going to alleviate all of the security pains. So like, that's usually the biggest one. Then hosting and performance, you can always kind of get some of the websites that are hosted on Webflow, going to the Webflow status page and stuff like that to make sure that all of those concerns are going to be alleviated. But then probably the biggest concern is going to be, do I actually need a Webflow enterprise? And like, we try to always be as transparent as possible because Webflow out of the box is a pretty powerful tool. So by, I mean, like scheduling a call with a Webflow enterprise team or like with, with a partner you're working with, it's always going to be pretty, pretty good for you to actually see, do I actually need enterprise? How far can I go with self-serve? And like, when I do go with enterprise, what am I going to get? So we always recommend going through that process and making sure that Webflow enterprise is for you. And then like, of course, the final concern is going to be the cost, but there are many different pieces kind of tying into all of this, like uh, how many websites you're going to need, how many people are going to be editing. There are many different variables. So it's not fair to talk about pricing. I feel like the best thing is, okay, let's document everything we're going to be needing and let's schedule a call with the Webflow enterprise team on the webflow.com slash enterprise to figure out what's going to be the product pricing and can we actually afford to proceed this route and kind of what are going to be the benefits we're going to be getting out of this. If you want to hear a lot more about like uh, Webflow for enterprise and me and our business development manager, Mihailo, talk talking about this topic like for around 20 minutes or so, you can visit the link down below and listen to the full podcast on Spotify on what are the other things and our experiences while working with Webflow for Enterprises.